This is Dr. Mariah White, host of Your Life Matters. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hello, it's No Filter Friday on Public House Media. It's finally quiet somehow for this exact second. That's probably going to change because it is very, very loud out there. But we're back. We have things to talk about, as per the usual. And I'm so dehydrated these days, I can't even tell you. Anyway, there's just not enough sparkling water in the world to keep me going. There just isn't. So... As for the ever-pressing theme on this show, we've got to talk about Gisley Maxwell in jail, and then we also have to talk about some more suicide. Luckily, these two things today, as of this moment, are unrelated, but it's all kind of in the same pot, so here we are, I guess. So, last week we talked all about Gisley Maxwell and all of her complaints from jail, which were... All those super fun to be like, really, lady, you can't be serious. Um, it's just, it is underneath it all is it is really, really gross. So since then, um, because she's just trying, she's kitchen sinking it to try to get, uh, to try to get out on bail. And she has since offered her French passport and her British passport, um, like her entire citizenship. She said that she will renounce both of those citizenships because she was born, born in France and then grew up in the UK. And she's like, I'll give up my passports. I'm not a flight risk. I swear, which we all know is a lie. It is a filthy, dirty, sore lie, just like the rest of this woman. So, um, the judge was like, no, no, you can keep your passports. And it doesn't matter to me because you're going to stay in jail. No bail. No bail, boo boo. Um, so that might be her new name. Her new name might be No Bail, No Bail Boo Boo. That might be her, uh, her new code name. We'll see. Do you like my collection of bras that I don't want to wear over here? Um, I just keep hanging them up and I just, I just don't want to wear them. I just don't. So, Gislaine shall stay in jail for the time being. I hope it sounds okay. Does it sound okay? If you're coming in, can you leave me a comment so I know who it is? Because this version, this format doesn't tell me. Anyway, so that's our our weekly update on Kisly and Maxwell. However, however, um, come on, friend request. This is not the time. I feel like Facebook should shut off your other notifications while you're doing a live. Like, priorities. Facebook, priorities. Got all these fact checkers out here, but you can't... You can't keep the randoms out of my, out of my friend request for... 20 minutes while we can do the show. So as of yesterday, things got all the way real because former U.S. Olympic gymnastics coach John Getter, charged with human trafficking and sexual assault, which we'll get to in a second, decided to suicide himself. And now I would imagine that Everybody like, okay, yes, he's guilty, and uh, he committed suicide, and he's trying to get out of it. However, as the question everything person that I am, and that the media has taught us to be, is that I'm wondering in the back of my mind if he actually did kill himself. But we'll get to that in a second. Now, way, way back, we did a couple shows about the Larry Nasser case. If you remember Dr. Larry Nasser, or if you don't, he was the... Um, a doctor who was like the physician for the U.S. Olympic team, and he sexually assaulted so many girls that were um, training as gymnasts when they were young, um, training as gymnasts for the U.S. Olympic team, on the U.S. Olympic team, and there were girls that testified against Dr. Larry Nasser that said that he started abuse, sexually abusing them as their doc, as these girls doctor at as young as eight years old. Um, and then just continued. The U S Olympic committee knew about it. 
They didn't care. They covered it up. They swapped it under the rug. Didn't care, didn't care, didn't care, didn't care. So Dr. Larry had an accomplice and um, he was a U.S. Olympic um, gymnastics coach and his name was John Geddert. Let me see if I can find a picture of him. I mean, this dude seems like a... Sounds like, it seems like pedo material to me. And apparently, this guy was even more sinister and abusive than Dr. Nasser, who is, by the way, also rotting in jail until further notice. He was given, um, he was giving a, he was given a, a lengthy sentence. And in, if you go back to that episode where we talked about Larry Nasser, the last final episode, we talked about his sentencing, um, there's a lot of wonderful, juicy quotes from the um, from the judge that sentenced him. And his trial was long, and they heard from every accuser. Um, the abuser heard from every accuser. It was a uh, it it's it set in my opinion that trial set the gold standard for systematic sexual abuse, um, inside or outside of an organization. I mean, it's just. That's how you run a trial for one of these sick, sick, sick freaks. So, um, this is all in Michigan, by the way, which I always tell you is a hotbed for crimes against children. And then unfortunately, that's just the way that it is. I mean, it's a, it's a hotbed for crime in general, but crimes against kids, Michigan just has a certain je ne sais quoi in that area. So this is from Charlotte from USA Today. Um... Getter, who was 63, formerly owned and coached at uh, Twist Stars Gymnastics Club in Diamonddale, Michigan, where hundreds of women say convicted sex offender Larry Nasser sexually abused them. Many said Ger uh, Getter knew of his abuse, and Nasser had regularly treated young lackeys in back in a back room at Twist Stars. Twist Stars, Twist Stars. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. Anyway, there was a girl that um, testified in the Larry Nasser case that this gymnastics coach walked in on Dr. Larry Nasser. Um, assaulting her and was like, oh, hey guys, how are you? And then just walked out and literally didn't care. Now, what we're hearing from this case is that these two were working in tandem, basically. So one of the girls said that they had like a good cop, bad cop kind of a situation. So like this gymnastics ghost that just committed suicide would be really, really horrible to them. And it seemed like kind of a, like a Dr. Luke Kesha kind of a situation, um, and he would force them to compete when they were injured, force them to train when they were injured because it made money for the facility when they won at these events. Um, and just in, even out of a competition or outside of gymnastics, um, there was a girl that told a story about how, um, she wasn't feeling well and she had eaten French fries and then vomited her soul out basically. And he like, pushed her face in it, I guess, and then called everybody over and was like, watch her clean this up. French fries are not on the gymnast diet. You guys are not allowed to be eating this. Blah, 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 blah. Just really senseless, ungymnastics related abuse, which is just, it just doesn't seem, it doesn't seem possible that people would allow these things to happen, let alone pay for this sort of training. And then I think about, um, how there's always, um, enablers in these situations. There's always enablers and it's, um, being a professional ha athlete, just like being a professional actor or a professional dancer or a professional model, you know, these are careers that, um, saying that people want them is just, it's, it's an understatement. It's like a, it's like a soul driven compulsion of like people that, you know, want to have these sorts of careers. And it's not even necessarily like a career is sort of the byproduct. It's like this thing that they absolutely have to do and out of their own, out of their own volition. And these abusive people, these monsters are like, Oh, Hey, look, um, an opportunity for me to slide in and abuse children or abuse, you know, whoever is, is putting their absolute heart and soul into becoming this thing, to becoming this profession. And 
it sound is good. Wonderful. I'm so happy it sounds good. It was so loud today and I was like, please, please stop being loud. Even shutting this window is just not enough. Um, and there's, there's also parents involved in this. There's also parents involved in it. And now these girls have always talked about how, um, because this coach and the doctor were such good friends that they could never approach the other one about the abuse and their good cop, bad cop dynamic was that, um, the coach would tear them down and be absolutely awful to them. And then as a result of these injuries, et cetera, et cetera, they go see Dr. Larry Nasser or Dr. Larry Nasser comes to see them in the back room of this same, you know, facility, the same gymnastics facility. And he's like, Oh, you're injured. Let me do a chiropractic adjustment via sticking my hand in your vagina. Like really, really strange things. And then when you add the fact that these are children, these are minors that are enduring this stuff is just, it's so, 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 so sickening. I cannot believe that it's a thing that exists in the world, but it does. And that's why we have to do a show about it because we can't just, we can't just let CNN just put out some clickbait and call it a day. Like it's, it's not enough. It's a bigger conversation than that. It's a bigger problem than that. These are not isolated incidents and these people are working in tandem. They're coordinating to make this stuff happen. Um, Ghislaine Maxwell, for example, chief coordinator in charge for Jeffrey Epstein, um, probably with some help from Larry Wexler, but whatever. Hello, more people coming in. Can you leave me a comment so I know who you are? Anyway, so he, uh, Mr. Geddert here, was up on 20 counts of human trafficking and forced labor, one count of first-degree sexual assault, one count of second-degree sexual assault, racketeering, and lying to a police officer. Okay, so we'll get to this. That's not enough charges. Let's break this down real fast. So apparently he lied to police about NASA's role as a team physician at um, Twistars saying he had never had any complaints about Nasser's treatment, denying he was aware of any athletes receiving intervaginal treatments at Twistar, which aren't a thing. By the way, this man was not a gynecologist. He was a sports physician. Those two things do not go together. Um, and saying that males are not allowed in the female locker room. Charges were filed Thursday morning. Getter's attorney Chris Bergenstrom did not respond to a comment on Thursday. The human trafficking charges are related to the forced labor resulting in injury in 19 athletes, all of whom were minors. Isn't that funny how this is always involving minors, never grown adults. One of the people has two charges connected to them. The trafficking charges are alleged to have occurred between 2008 and 2018. Getter could face up to 20 years in prison for the six charges involving minors and up to 15 for the other 14 charges. Um, This was all put out by the uh, Michigan Attorney General, Dana Nessel. Um, And then... They said that, oh, he wasn't a flight risk. He was supposed to be turning himself in that day. And then they found his body from alleged suicide. Um, apparently, they changed the name of this gym and like, he transferred it to his wife. There's a lot of... A lot of shenanigans going on here is the point. Um, but... It's just, all of it's just so gross. Like, why does it have to be so, 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 so gross? Um, but this, this good cop, bad cop dynamic that these, that these people had was just, just sickening. And the U.S. Olympic Committee knew, and they're completely implicated in this. And, and I say this about like acting and modeling and entertainment in general. It's like, it's not worth it. It's not, it's, none of these things are worth, um, Because these victims have eating disorders, they've had suicide attempts, they've had all of these horrific trauma situations that they've had to deal with for their whole lives. And like, it's not, it's not worth it. And certainly making a movie or a TV show isn't worth it either. And we have to get away as a, as a culture, as a people from you know, willing to put all of that on the line for something that's not, it's not life or death. It's really not. It's, it's ancillary, honestly. I mean, 
And that's coming from somebody who, you know, who does model and act for a living. Like at no point is making a TV show or making a movie or making a music video or making a commercial, making any of these things. None of it is ever in a million years by any stretch of the imagination worth getting assaulted or living with trauma for your whole life or God forbid, putting your kids out there to that sort of trauma for their whole life. Like, it's, we have to stop this. We have to stop it. I mean, the, obviously the first, you know, the first line of defense here is to get rid of these people in a brutal fashion of people that see a, an opportunity or something. It's not an opportunity, but they see it as an opportunity to, oh, hey, that kid really, really, really wants to be an Olympic gymnast. That kid really, really, really wants to be, you know, an actor and these, you know, they're so talented. They've totally got it. Let me come in and get my jollies and, and step all over that. We have to get rid of these people in the most brutal fashion that the law will allow. And then after that, as a society, we really have to get up off of thinking that getting on TV or getting on an Olympic team or getting on any of these things is even remotely close to being worth taking one ounce of nonsense out of anybody, especially letting a child take a one ounce of nonsense from a fully grown functioning adult that knows exactly what they're doing. It's just not acceptable. It's just not. There's no part of this that's acceptable. Thank God we're finally living in a time where people are like, ugh, gross. No. I mean, say what you want about millennials, say what you want about Gen Z, but we're just not about this life anymore. We're just not all of this, uh, you know, that's the way it works, blah, blah, blah. This is how people behave. No, it's not normal. It's not okay. And nobody has to put up with it. We can have an Olympic team where um, nobody has eating disorders or lives through a life of trauma because they were sexual abused starting at eight by a U.S. Olympic team sanctioned physician. Like, these things are not required. They do not make the Olympic team any better. And furthermore, do any of us as an audience care about gymnastics enough to be like, yeah, girl, you're going to have to endure that. So when I watch the Olympics every four years, um, it's like even better. I, I, do, I don't think that's necessary. I don't think it's necessary and I don't want to link it to steroids because that's not really a full equivalency, but like, how can we be so up in arms about deflate gate? Oh, mosquitoes get out of here. Deflate gate and, you know, steroid use and, or even back to the Olympics, you know, people taking cold medicine with codeine and then, you know, not being able to pass a drug test or, a poppy seed bagel. That is absolute controversy. Oh my God. You know, the Olympic committee team is, is ready to come unglued over these sorts of things. You know, professional sports organizations, NFL, MLB, et cetera, et cetera. They'll just, you know, clutch pearls and absolutely run a total dog and pony show over some of these things, but they'll cover up People like Dr. Larry Nasser for how long? Like, who's abusing children over some gymnastics? This is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. And as horrible it is that these, you know, survivors of this gymnastics coach um, won't get won't get their day in court. They won't get to see that. I mean. On the other hand, it would be really great if some of these people that are that know that they've done wrong could just do us all a favor and because this can't stand. We cannot continue in the world like this. Like it's absolutely crazy and there's so many people out there that are good coaches or good coaches in gymnastics or acting or whatever that they are that, you know, can actually do their job and not abuse anybody. There's plenty of people to fill these roles. Like this guy could not have been that great of a gymnastics coach. He just couldn't have been. He just couldn't have been. All of those medals um, were hang that were hanging on the U.S. Olympic team's neck were hanging on their necks, not their coach's neck. 
not that facility's neck, not Dr. Larry Nasser's neck. So those, those medals belong to them. Those accomplishments belong to them. And surely they can find some coaches that, um, aren't monsters and aren't trying to abuse people. So that's, um, that's enough No Filter Friday for one day. Check out other shows on Public House Media, like Choose to Rise, which isn't dark and dirty. It's very uplifting. It's very uplifting. Kim Myers is awesome. And I will see you all next week. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye.